Our next speaker almost needs no introduction, but she's going to have one anyway. <laughs> Dr. Tova Lichtenstein made Aliyah in 1971 together with her husband, Rav Aaron Lichtenstein Zatzal, and their children, one of which we had the uh, great honor to have speak here. Rav Moshe Lichtenstein spoke here in our shul just a few months ago. Dr. Lichtenstein holds a PhD in social work from Bar Ilan University with an expertise in child welfare. She has both practiced and taught social work for over 25 years. Today, she will be speaking to us on generational transition, continuity, or rupture. I present to you Dr. Tova Lichtenstein. It's a, it's a great pleasure to be here. Natalia is really beautiful. And, the, and I was born in Boston, and Boston is on the sea. And just to come to any city on the sea does wonderful things for my neshama. <laughs> so I thank you for inviting me to Natanya. I thank you for inviting me to Natanya and not to Ranana or to Yerushalayim. <laughs> no, no offense to the people here. No Ranana. offense. No offense. No offense. It's just my close relationship. People are related to the, to the, um, to the, to the the climate or the things of their youth. I am going to talk today about gener generational transition, whether it's a continuous thing or whether it's a rupture, meaning does the gener do the generations change drastically and the new generation of leadership is completely different or does it change continuously and it's a continuity but it's different. But I would like first to talk a little bit about generational, the passing of generations. The whole notion of passing of generations did not start with the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, that's the focus of this day, but it's been with us since the beginning of Sefer Breshit. Because man was created, Adam and Chava were created, and they needed to pass on to the next generation and to the next generation. But the first chapters of Breshid speak about gen passings of generations, not of generational transition. And I will explain to you what I mean by this. The first li list of the generations that we have in Breshid focus on this. It's not, in the, it's not in, the, in the things yet. Some of the things I have here, I'll read them and I will translate them because these are psukim that I think you know from Kriyat HaTorah deep inside of yourselves. The first list of generations starts with Adam, with Adam and focuses on establishing generations in an orderly manner. Adam and Eve were created. They had to build a world. You had to be able to have children and to give over to them, and they had to live in the world, and then you needed more children, because the world started with two people. And so there you have to establish, you have to establish the generation. And so that the transition was not the problem, existence was the problem. How do you live in this world when you know nothing whatsoever about it? And God, in the very basic meaning of existence, and God gives Adam and Chava a bracha. And it says in Bracious, and I will translate, Vayivarecho tam Elohim, and God blessed them, Vayoma lehem, and he said to them, Pru urevu umilu et aretz, multiply and fill the world, v'kiv shahu, and and, and conquer the world, conquer the world, not in the sense that you, Russia wants to conquer the Ukraine, but in the sense you have to harness the world. The word I would say for kivshuhu, I would translate it as harness the world. Veridu bedegat hayam ba'of hashamayim and harness nature u'bakol chayah ha'romeset ba'aretz. So that was the beginning task of the generations. There were the ten generations between Adam and, and Noah. These, they, had, they had to establish a modus vivendi that nature that included physical survival and environmental stay safety. You had to be able to live in a, in a safe world. As Adam's task in those ten tasks of all the people that come from Adam and Noah, there's a whole list of them, and in every one of them it says, they had to have children, 
they had to have environmental safety, they need a continuity of the human race. They had to find a way in which to live in the, this new universe that they had come to. That would happen in the early generations. However, phys physical and environmental safety was not to be attained only by overcoming nature. But physical and environmental safety could be attained primarily by realizing man's reliance upon and his need to obey God. Noah, the 10th generation, took 10 generations and they had environmental safety, but they did not, and they had children and they had a world but they were about to destroy this world. They were about to become as gods. And they build towers and they build this and this. And God sees what's going on and he realizes that man needs, and man needed to realize that he needed to obey God and rely upon him. And Noah, Noah's flood, there's the, there's, there's uh, a, in the, uh, in the, Zmi wrote on Leil Shabbat, we talk about Yemei Noah, we talk about Noah, and we talk about Mabul Noah, Noah's flood. So you begin to worry about Noah a little bit if he had a flood, but that's a different story. And what followed, and what followed, expand upon this and emphasize the, man, the need of man to be moral and ethical and humble in God's presence. Once again, continuation and the literal meaning of the word is the issue. Moral and ethical continuation. Continuation of people that understand they, uh, there is a maker, there is a God, there is a Kadosh Baruch Hu, and they need to follow his ways. When we come to the Avot, we come to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, within the Debraces, it's a different task they had. The task of the Avot was no longer physical environment, but the insurance of the development of Shifte Yisrael. Here we had a couple. We had nothing but a couple. Shifte Yisrael, the tribes of Israel begin with a couple, Avraham and Sarah. And they have to ensure that Am Yisrael is developing. Avraham's task was to bring monotheism into the world. And that was a very difficult task that he devoted his whole life to bringing the idea that there is one God and only one God. He lived in a world of avodah zarah, of idol worship, and he had to bring the idea of monotheism in the world. And, and was, he was tried by God multiple times, multiple times, ten, until he brought a child into the world. And he was given a child to raise. Yitzchak, his son, needed to fortify that base, and the only way he could fortify it was by cont continuity, not transition. He had to make sure that the world that Abraham had established, the belief in monotheism, the relationship with the people who were not Jews, who were not monotheistic, needed to be fortified. Yaakov had a completely different task. And, and Yitzchak, let's go back to Yitzchak, he was ensured those conditions, and it says in the Torah, And the covenant I will fulfill to, with Yitzchak, who Sarah will give you as a child, God, God says to Abraham. Yitzchak, uh, Yaakov had a very different task, the arduous task of developing Shifte Yisrael. He needed Rachel, he needed Leah, he needed their two handmaids in order to do it. He needed four wives because the children of Israel needed different mothers. Because each of these mothers had different qualities. Rachel was chesed, Leah was gvura. I assume their handmaidens were like them and they needed to raise 12 children. And these 12 children had different, different, different ideas. They had different ways of life. They were very different. And they needed to form a nation. And that, that nation was to stand at the foot of Ha Sinai and to get the Torah. The Torah was not given to a family. The Torah was given to a people. 
And so the, the issue of transition was not the issue, it was of continuity. We had to start from Ad, Ad, Adam HaRishon and get to, to Shifte Israel, so they as a people could stand at the foot of Ha Sinai and, and accept the Torah and come into Eretz Israel. It was a package deal. You'll get the Torah and you will come to Eretz Israel. They needed, they needed, a tribe needed a father who was Yaakov, who would be their leader and the mothers who would nurture them. Now that brings me now, but Lokain of D. Moshe, by, by the time Moshe comes on the scene, and you've heard about Moshe in a wonderful lecture that Rabbi Israel, uh, the Alex Israel gave you, well, uh, Moshe was different. Moshe was a leader of a newly formed nation. This nation had been, had been born at the foot of Mount Sinai, but Moshe had been their leader since he reappeared on the scene. He All of a sudden he appears to bring the message of the impending gula. All of a sudden he appears and he says, you're gonna be, you're gonna be saved. Moshe's leadership was put to the test and you heard a wonderful, wonderful lecture about how his leadership was put to the test. Uh, I have a son that came to visit from the United States and they, they are because Shavuos, there were two day Shavuos, so they're a week behind us. So we heard Korach this week and now he's going back, he went back last night, he's gonna hear Korach again. I said, I said to him, my dear, of all the pastors in the Torah that I would not want to hear twice, Korach would be my choice because it is heartbreaking, the Pashas of Korah. But I don't, want, I don't want to focus on Korah, and I don't want to focus on Shlach, and I don't want to focus on Bahaloska. You had a very good description of that. I want to talk, talk about the transition that is necessary when Moshe is about to die. That is intergenerational transition. You have a people, you have a leader, the leader is about to die, and he must give over his leadership to somebody else, to the next generation. But you know, it was not only Moshe that faced that task, Aaron HaKohen also, because the leadership of Moshe and Aaron was really joint leadership by Adabar Hashem on Moshe and Aaron. He was the Kohen and he was the leader. And a cursory reading, if we just read the story of, of Aaron's death, you would think that he had a wonderful death, that his leadership went on to his children. And it says in the, in the Pasuk, and that's not in your list either, Vayafshet Moshe et Aaron, and Moshe took off his clothing because the Kohen was represented by the big day kuna, by his uniform, if you will. And he put on those same garments that, uh, that Aaron had onto his son. There in the top of the mountain, and then he stayed there, Aaron, his dad died. And who comes down? And Moshe and Elazar come down from the mountain. In such a situation, you think this is a wonderful, continuous giving over of the kuhuna. The generations have changed in a peaceful and absolutely moving. I'm always moved by this death, except when I begin to think. Aaron had four children, and his oldest two children were Nadav and Avia. And Nadav and Avia, they accompanied Moshe to the foot of Mount Sinai. They went up there to the foot of Mount Sinai when he was to receive the Torah. They were very, very involved in leadership of the people in getting the Torah in divine, in divine commandment. And so their position as the continuation of the joint leadership of Moshe of Aaron was clear. But despite that, they are struck down on the day of the Mishkan was inaugurated. And Chazal have many, many medrashim about who they were. Were they good? Were they bad? I think a many medrashim, as you can imagine, they were tzaddikim, and they were great tzaddikim. They weren't such tzaddikim. And I have, unfortunately, and I apologize to Nadav Avihu, picked out 
medrashim, the presentim, in a negative light because they were killed. They were, uh, the God struck them down of the day of the Mishkan. Now, if you look at number one, I would like to read with you. What do you have here? I have my own sheet, but let's see what you have. Shira'a, I'll read it and I'll translate it, okay? Shira'u et Moshe vet Aaron. Shira'u et Nadav avihu. Et Moshe v'Aaron. Shayu mehalchim t'chila, t'chila. When they saw Moshe and Aaron walking, v'heim bayim achareihim. Notice the difference here. First, they're walking, and who are they? They're walking after them. They're not walking with them. You know, uh, Judaism is a hierarchical uh, system. The Kohen isn't the Levi, and the Levi isn't the Yisrael. The father is not the child, and he has to be, he has to, he has to respect him. So Moshe and Aaron were walking first, and they were walking Acharehim. V'chol Yisrael and all of Israel behind them, that's not a bad place to be, right after Moshe and Aaron and all Israel behind you. Amalo Nadav la'avihu. Nadav says to Avu, Avihu, a pretty soon, these two old people will die. Pretty soon, old, old, pretty soon, just wait, don't worry. They're going to die, those old guys, and we are going to be the leaders of the people. Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, God said, Who is going to bury whom? They are going to bury you. And they'll continue to be the leaders. Okay, and then, and then, but there was a story before then. It hadn't started then. Nadav and Aviu, as I had said, have gone, went up to the foot of Ha Sinai. And something happened there. Something happened at the foot of Har Sinai that, and the Patsuk says, and the Patsuk says, let's see, one second. No, okay, okay. It says that they, and I'll read you this, and they said, they went up the Har Sinai and they saw God, they saw and they sat down to eat and drink. Yeah, right, someone in the audience says, ooh. Right, it meant you've been divine apparition, the Torah's being given, the mountains are rubbing, there's Aish, there's Timot, Ashan, and then you sit down and you eat a, a bagel. I don't know what they ate, a hamburger, I don't know. I'll tell you as an aside, uh, that, that Jewish culture is based on eating. <laughs> uh, my, I once said to someone who didn't know anything, about religious Jews, I said, religious Jews do three things. Either they fast, or they daven, or they eat. <laughs> so, but I don't think that God meant us to eat at Giloy Shechina. You know, we could wait a little while. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Nadav and Avio had a Kalut Rosh, it means they were not serious when they went up to Ha Sinai. Kishirowet Hashchina, when they saw the, the divine presence, Shenemar in Shmos, Chavdalet, Vayechazu et Elohim, and they saw God. Vayochlu Vayishtu, and they ate and they drank. Vichi Achila Vishtiyahayasha, that was a place for a meal. To what is this like? What is this like? Le'eved, to a servant. He, he is watching his, his master, and he, that's his job. And he bites him. He gives him back a bite. He doesn't understand, and he really injures him. When Nadav Avio sat and they ate at half, at, right at Hamamad Sinai, they should have been just been burnt at that moment. But because that Matantora, 
היה חביב לפני הקדוש ברוך הוא. It was Matan Torah and God. It was beautiful for him because Am Yisrael says, Nase v'nishma. They stand there, they connect the Torah. L'fikach lo ra ha-kodesh baruch hu l'fgoa behem bo bayom. He said, wait, your time will come, but not now. And he waited for the day of the Mishkan. Now, I'd like to continue. The, the, the Medrash goes on and says, not only were they anxious to grab and to, 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 and, to, and, to, and to be the leaders of the, of, the, of the Am Yisrael. Not only had they at Mahmad Har Sinai not been respectful, but they were Rabbi Levi Amah, Shachatzim Hayu, Shachatzanim. They were Bali Gaiva, they were proud, and they were, I don't know, what's the word for Shachatzan in, in English? Uh, bluffers, fakers, uh, I don't know what they were. Hayu Yoshvot Agunot. There were women that had no husbands. Mamtinot lehem, waiting for them to get married. The Mahayu Omrim, what did Nadav Avihu say? Achi Avinu Melech. The brother, my uncle, the brother of my father is a king. That's Moshe Rabbeinu. Achi Imenu Nasi. That is this from, from the Nasi of, of, of a, uh, one of the Nasiim of the, of the Shvatim. Avinu Kohen Gadol. Our father is the Kohen Gadol. We have such yichas. How could we ever make a shidduch? You know, the yichas goes to yichas. Va'anu beis gane kuna. And we are two assistant Kohenim. Eza isha hogenet lanu. There's nobody that we could marry. I think a lot of our old bachelors say this. Um, and then, for Rabbi Yudin B'Shem Abba Oma, B'Fiya Mamu Zelazer. Okay, Maseda. Okay, I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip a number three to the end. Ela Malamei Chaya Kashe Lefnei HaKadosh. Ah, V'chein Hadava. V'yamat Nadav Aviu, it says Lefnei Hashem. Why does the Potsuk say Nadav and Avihu died before God? Why does it say before God? Uh, that's, it's a three on the very bottom. <laughs> it was very hard for the Kodesh Baruch Hu. At the time when the sons of Tzadikim die. B'chayehim, in the life of a Tzadikim. Another than Avihu was a punishment, not only to them, but it was a punishment to their father and their mother. Because to lose a child, I don't have to explain to anybody that's apparent the terrible, the terribleness, that's the only word I know, the horror of losing a child. And so it was very hard for, for the Rabboni Shalaydam. The Shah Shabnehim Sodikim Meitim Bechayim. Ela Rab Yudin Dipo Ba'akhan Rab Pinchas Rabbi Chama B'Shem Rabbi Siyoman Hacha Et Ama Lefnei Hashem Why does it say Lefnei Hashem Beis Pamim twice? Ula Halan Hu Omer Al Pnei Aaron Avihem Pam Achat Ela Melamei Tia Kashel Lefnei HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kiflayim Mi Avihem It was twice as difficult for God to take Nadav and Avihu than then, then, then it was for his father, for their father to lose them. That God, you know, the, uh, the Christians like to say God is an angry God. We say Kael Kana, about what the Medrash really says, God does what he, what Kavyachol, you know, if we could talk the way of God, but what he needs to do. But God is pained by the things that he has to do in order to, in order to, uh, in order to lead Am Yisrael in the proper way. And so there we have, there we have a kind of gener intergenerational transition that is to my mind rupturous. They were not going to lead Am Yisrael if they were Shachzanim and Yehovim and no one was good enough for them. And they, and they, when, 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 when they faced the Shekhinah, they sat and ate. No, they were not going to lead it like this. This, was a, this would have been a rupture. And in this sense, God did not allow 
the continuation, the intergenerational transition of Moshe and Aaron to be rapturous. But now I'd like to focus on Moshe Rabbeinu. And the question of Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm not focusing on the Pasha that you studied, that we read about, about Korach. I'm going to pass it on the Pasha that Moshe faces death. Comes the end of Sefer Bamidbor, and Moshe has to die. And God says to him that he has to die, and God says to him that he will not go into Eretz Israel, and that Moshe and Yehoshua bin Nun will be his successor. What could be more continuous than a divine, ordained successor? You have a big company, and you have a great big company, and you retire, and you don't know which one of your sons to give it to. <laughs> but if God would appear and say, give it to Yankale, you know, maybe the other children wouldn't like it. But for the father, it would be much easier. For the mother, it would be much easier. To finally ordained with who was going to be after them. God says to him, God says to him, give it to Yehoshua ben Nun. And he is going to lead, and he is going to lead the people. Now, Yehoshua ben Nun was, and, and how does God say to him? And number four, Vayom Hashem al Moshe, kachet Yehoshua ben Nun, take Yehoshua ben Nun, isha sheir ruach bo. He has the Ruach of Hashem in him. And give it him formally. And put him in front of the Kohen. In front of the whole people. And you will give him the leadership in front of Am Yisrael. So they can't come and say, no, it wasn't so. And so all of Am Yisrael will hear that this is the leader. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, but all these papers here, your papers and my papers. Okay. The Akoni Amod. The the mishpat ha urim lefnei Hashem al piv yetsu they will travel by what he does al piv yavo v'hu v'chol bnei Yisrael ito v'chol eida and that there was Moshe and Moshe was and Moshe's relationship to Yeshua did not start that day. Let's go back in time and look about look who Moshe who Yeshua was. What was Moshe's relationship to him? When Moshe went up the mountain, we're going back in time. When Moshe went up the mountain to get up Ha Sinai to get the Torah, Vayakal Moshe and Moshe got up the Yeshua Mishato and Yeshua his servant. Vaya Moshe Lakhara Lokim he went up and Nadava Vyaske Nim the Yahushua went up with him. Nadava Vyavaske Nim left. Yahushua stayed on that mountain, waiting loyally for who for, for, for Moshe to come down. And Moshe comes down the mountain when God says to him, they've made an eagle, go down the mountain. And Yoshua meets Moshe at the bottom of the mountain where he's still sitting there 40 days and 40 nights. And he says, By Yishma Yeshua at Kolaam, Barah. He heard something bad was going on in the camp. He wasn't there because he was waiting for Moshe. You cannot have a more loyal servant than that. And yet, page seven, and yet, here it is. And yet, and yet, there was a dynamic to generational change. Moshe did not want to die. In order for Moshe to give the reins to Yehoshua, he had to die. And I think everybody who's old does not particularly want to die. It's not a great pleasure, you know. <laughs> 
you don't want to leave, you don't want to leave your family, you don't want to leave your children, you want to see this grandchild, you want this, you want to enjoy the sun and the and the, and, and the ocean, and you want to go on the Tayelet, and you want to study Torah, and you want to do this, and you want to do that. Nobody wants to die. Not even Moshe Rabbeinu. And Moshe Rabbeinu here is caught in a tremendous conflict. How can he die? He, who the Medrash said, had, had determined who would live and who would die. It says in Korach, Moshe says, God, open up the earth and take them, kill them. They don't deserve to live. That's on one hand. Moshe also, the Medrash says, says in Birchot, Moshe at the end of, of um, Zos HaBracha, Yechi Ruvain, Ruvain should live. Moshe was a great leader. Moshe determined fate of people. God had confidence in what Moshe would do. Moshe, Moshe acted in consonant, in, con, in congruence with God's wish. And now Moshe has to stand opposite the Malacha mothers and die. And somebody, that little boy that he raised from a he was a kid, a nar, a mishare, he's going to take over from him. And I think that there can be no intergenerational transition, no continuity, unless the older generation moves over and says, we're ready to give it to you. We can give it to you. We're not afraid of dying. Our time has come. Our time has come. And that is what we are going to do. And the Medrash, Says, tells a beautiful story that it wasn't only Moshe Rabbeinu that was afraid of dying. Rav Ashi, Rav Ashi, Rav Ashi was a Rosh Galuta. He was the head of the, of the yeshiva in Sura. He was in Bavel. He was head of the biggest yeshiva. He saved the Talmud Bavli for us. We wouldn't be here today unless we had Torah Shabbat Peh. And I'll, I'll read you the Hebrew translation. Near Alo Malach Hamavit B'Shuk, Ravashi was walking to the yeshiva. He went through the shuk, and who's running around the shuk? The Malach Hamavit. Ravashi was not a stupid man, as you might imagine, if he was the head of the yeshiva in Sura. So Ravashi says to the Malach Hamavit, "Wait, I'm ten lishloshim yom. Just give me another thirty days. Va'achzor el Talmudi." And I'll continue learning. What, uh, that, what can, Malach HaMavit can't say you shouldn't learn. You know, that's Vehigis Abam Yaman Belayla. And so what happens? The Yom HaShloshim, the Malach HaMavit's a good guy. He made a deal. But he came back on the 30th day. The Yom HaShloshim, Ba Malach HaMavit Lekachto. Amalo, Maze. What are you, what are you, silly? You coming? You coming to get me? As he said, lo. Madua tama maher kolka. What's the rush? The ein chayyeh chol it chotet mitati. So postpone it. Amalo hamalach hamavit said to him, "Docheket otcha shato so Rav Huna banata. Your time was pushing you. It's now. It's the time of Rav Huna banata. It's his time now. It's not your time anymore." Ve'ein malchut no gat bechevata v'no telet mimena afilu kimlo hasara. The time of one person ends and then begins the time of another. So the death, in a sense, is what he's saying is death is not dor haleich. Death is necessary in order for the next generation to be able to take full leadership. Because you can't have the old generation looking over your shoulder all the time and telling you, oh, you're da 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 you're not supposed to do it this way, I did it that way. The generations are different, door, door, video, shove. Every generation needs a different, a different leader. And so it was time had come, and so door, halech, the door, ba, as I understand it from this medrash, is not descriptive. It doesn't describe what happens, it's proscriptive. It says to you, Dor, it's time to go. It's time to die. It's time to leave the next generation to do it as they did 
without you looking over their shoulder. And I think that affects every single one of us sitting in this room. Doesn't make a difference how old you are, whether you're 20 or 40 or 60 or 80 or 90. That is a frightening thought to think that we must pass on and we must give the next generation the freedom and to do it not like fighting the mother of mothers and saying, wait, don't come. Doesn't mean you shouldn't go to the doctor. <laughs> but that certainly doesn't mean that. But it means that you have to accept that that's the nature of life. Life has a beginning, life has a middle, and life has an end. And that end allows the next generation to do what it needs to do, and that generation will also be like that. And they will, get the, they will become older, and then they will give it to the next generation. And if I would go back to that first list, in Breshit, that I told you how the generations come after the generations, the Yolid, Banim, the Banot, I could give it a different interpretation now. And I would say, that's the continuity. That's the continuity. This one come and we do our job, and then the next one comes. And part of the, 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 um, part of the, of, of the, the, the understanding of this that a religious Jews had were all part of a shashevet, were all part that started at Ha Sinai and is going to go on to the end of the generations. But I would like to read to you what happened to Moshe. So Moshe didn't want to die, and understand it. So Professor Blitzstein has a whole book of all the Medrashim about Moshe that he didn't want to die. It's a book about this thing. It's called Mihanavo by Yaakov Blitzstein in Hebrew. It's a lovely book. I read it, I couldn't put it down. It was like, it was like a, a dramatic story. So this is the last Medrash. Kara et Yehoshua, v'amalefanav shel rebona shalolam. Ye told Yeshua erki, ye told Yeshua erki, let Yeshua take over from me. So what's the bit going to be? Let him take over from me. Ve'ehei chai, and I live. Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Asei lo kederech shu osei lecha. Fine. I, I agree. I agree. You know, you'll do what, you'll be his assistant, you'll be his mesharet, and, and, and he'll run the people. Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, miyad hishkim Moshe v'halak lebeito shal, Yoshua, he got up and he went to Yoshua's house. Nityarem Yoshua, Yoshua got frightened. What's Moshe doing coming to him? He's his, he is his, he is his loyal, he is his loyal Misharet. He was his Nar. He was with him from up to thick and thin. What's Moshe doing coming to him? Yet, Amar Moshe, Rabbi, Bo Etzli. And my Moshe said, Rabbi, my, my master, let's go. So they, there was an exchange of roles. Yatzala Haloch, they went for a while. Halach Moshe Lismolo Shel Yehoshua. Moshe went to his left. Usually he would be on the right and Yehoshua would be on his left. But now Yehoshua was the first and he was on his side. Nichnesu l'ohel moed. They went into the ohel moed. Yarad amun ha'anan z'yifsik b'nehem. The amun ha'anan, the cloud that God spoke to Moshe, came down on Yehoshua and not on Moshe. And Moshe's out here, and Yehoshua's here, and the amun is on top of him, and God is speaking to Moshe. And God is speaking to Yeshua. Sli, excuse me. God is speaking to Yeshua, and Moshe is on the outside. Kishinistalek Amud Hanan. When the Amud Hanan went up, Halach Moshe ate to Yeshua. Moshe went to Yeshua. For Ma, Ma Malacha. What did God say to you? <laughs> Maybe tell me. Ma malacha dibur, amalo Yehoshua. And here, Yehoshua, the loyal student, just couldn't stand it anymore. He couldn't manage 
that his leadership should be supervised by the, by the generation above. And Yoshua, as I say, his, his, if, you were to, if you read Sukkim in the Torah from how he waits for Moshe, how he goes with him, how he fights Amalek for Moshe, for, Moshe, he, for the Am Yisrael, how he is devoted and knows his place, he just couldn't manage that when he gets the leadership and God speaks directly to him, that Moshe says to him, No! What did he say? Yoshua said, Malo Yehoshua. Kishahaya hadibo nigla alecha. When the Rabboni Shalom revealed himself to you and spoke with you, Hayit, Hayibo nigla alecha, Yodeya Hayiti Mame Daber imcha imach. Did you ever tell me what he said to you? So why do you think I am going to tell you? But what he was saying was leadership can't be of the old generation, the young generation. The leader has his qualities, and he needs to be the one that talks to the Rabboni Shlona. And no one can come to him and say, no, what did he say? And so he told him. You can imagine what's happening to Yehoshua, and you can imagine what's happening to Moshe. Oto Sha'a, that hour, Tsa'ak Moshe, Moshe yelled and said, Mea mitot velo kinat achat, a hundred deaths, but not one being jealous of the other one. I would rather die than have to spend the rest of my life being jealous that Yehoshua is the one that is the leader of Am Yisrael. And then the Medrash adds something that is, I think, very, very, very powerful. It speaks to the ambivalence of us to see our children continuing. It speaks to the ambivalence of every person that, is, that realizes that he has to give to the next generation to do as they fit and that the death is an integral part of our life and that we must give up and not hang on like it. <coughs> and it says, and he said, and then the Medrash ashes, Vishlomo mefarsha in Shir Hashirim. Shlomo describes it and says, Ki aza ki mavet ahava. Love is as strong as death. Kashe ki And it is hard as the as the, as the grave, kina. The, and jealousy is as hard as the grave. Havasha hav Moshe li Yeshua. The love that Moshe had for Yeshua was aza, was great. Umasha kina, kine Moshe li Yeshua. But despite this great love, he was jealous. And he was jealous because he had lost it. And I wonder whether that's not applies to every one of us. Well, maybe we're jealous. Our children are one that are going, they're raising their children and, they're, and they are succeeding and they're going on trips to Europe. And, there, and we're walking around, you know, doing very interesting things. We're in Gan Eden, you know. We don't have to raise the children and we don't have to worry about Panosa. We don't have to worry about college. We don't have to worry about Shiduchim. We don't have to do all that. Yet are we not really a little jealous of the things that they are doing? You know, once I, I'll tell you a story, when the yeshiva had its 40th anniversary, and so they made a big party, and then and, 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 and Bo Grimm came, and then Rav Amital and my husband were dancing in a circle, and I stood up on some kind of a fence so I could watch them, and someone said to me, are you looking for something? I said, yeah. He said to me, what? I said, the kinder sheyarin, my children, my, my young years, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> and we give up those young years, and the next generation gets it. And on the one hand, it's like shira shirim, azah, I love them, we love them greatly. But in the sense, there is a kina. And so Moshe Rabbeinu, the great, the great leader, had to die and leave the next generation. And I think generation, if I'll go back to the topic, into generational transition, is only possible in a continuous way if the generation above welcomes the new generation and says to the new generation, do it, we'll help you, 
will be available when we need to be and we won't be available when we will not be available if you don't want us to be available and it and to general generation is not only the task of the next generation it's the task of the generation above it it's the interface between the two generations and that i think is the message we have to learn even moshe rabbeinu and yahushua was difficult for them to make that continuous change and i really wish that all of us should be able to make that change well thank you